Hi, my name is Leah Belland and I am the community advocate at Lifespin. Um, today, we're doing a, a webinar on how to access subsidized housing. Uh, so what is subsidized housing? Subsidized housing is social housing. Um, it's a government assisted um, housing program that provides rent geared to income and affordable housing units um, to those with low or moderate incomes. Um, social housing can include public housing, not-for-profit and cooperative housing. Um, RGI units, which is rent geared to income units, are based on 30% of your uh, household income and um, uh, additional charges to the units may apply for utilities, um, internet, uh, any um, other things that you may need that are not uh, outlined within the rental agreement. Uh, London Housing is made up of rent geared to income units. Uh, it, some units are owned by London Housing, other units are uh, individually managed, and some are co-op housing. Co-op housing units are available through uh, uh, London Housing, um, you can apply when you apply for housing um, for uh, subsidized units. You can also apply for uh, cooperative uh, housing units through co-ops individually, and we'll um, touch on that in a minute. So applying for London Housing. Um, there are three steps um, when you're applying uh, for RGI housing. Um, that's to complete the application package, uh, which is uh, linked here. Um, it is a short package uh, that is uh, fairly easy to uh, fill out. You will require um, some identification, uh, a birth certificate, um, and if you have any children, you will need birth certificates for all of your children. If you have um, anybody in your household that needs ex extra care, so if you're applying for more than one bedroom based on the fact that you have um, someone in your care or that you are a caregiver for somebody or that you require care so that you have a caregiver living in your house, um, then you will have to apply with all of the information um, of the individuals who will be living with you. Uh, so step two is that you will have to qualify for social housing. Um, to qualify for social housing, there are some, uh, there are some qualifications um, uh, that your uh, income is at a certain level, uh, that you have to have an income. Um, you can't go into housing if you don't have any income. If you don't have any income, then housing will help you access some sort of income supports. Uh, Ontario Works, ODSP, they will initially ask you to apply for Ontario Works. Once you have applied for Ontario Works, then you may be eligible for housing. Um, you have to be over the age of 16. Um, and you cannot have any outstanding debts with London Housing that you are not paying for. So if you do have debts with London Housing, that's fine as long as you have set up a payment program with them and that you have the proper documentation stating that you are repaying London Housing. Um, at which point you can sub submit your application. Um, there's also a portion here where it talks about special priority status an urgent status for those who are looking to qualify for housing. Um, we will look at that on the next slide. So these are additional statuses. There's special priority, urgent health, homelessness. There is urgent medical and there's urgent social. So special priority um, for individuals and families who were victims of abuse by an individual they lived with and those whose personal safety is significantly at risk or from victims of human trafficking. Um, you will have to speak with a social worker 
um, in any of these scenarios, uh, it will have to be a registered social worker who will be able to provide you with the documentation that you will need to apply for special priority status. If you're applying through registered homeless status, oftentimes you will be um, in uh, get a mission or uh, in some sort of housing where there will be a, um, a social worker present. If there isn't, you can contact me or you can contact somebody at the Television Army or at Mission Services and they can help you fill out an urgent homeless um, uh, form. Urgent medical for those with terminal illness or those who need to relocate um, to London for medical treatment or those who have a physical disability which prevents them from living in their current residence. So if you're living in some place where there is a non-working elevator or where you have to walk up a lot of stairs and you're applying um, or those who have a terminal illness and who require, uh, you know, uh, housing, uh, rent guaranteed income housing immediately. Um, these uh, applications go through quite quickly. They are, um, it's necessary that your doctor fills these, these applications out. Um, so you can call London Housing or call the Housing Access Center and request an urgent medical form. Um, uh, urgent social for those who are experiencing serious harassment where their personal safety is at risk. Again, you will have to speak with a registered social worker. You can contact me. I'm a registered social worker. I can help you with these um, with these forms. Um, if you are staying um, at Inova or any other shelter, uh, Roth home, any place like that, then there should be um, a registered social worker who is available to um, fill out these forms with you. Things to remember, uh, as of January 21, uh, 2021, applicants will only receive one offer of RGI housing. Um, if you do not accept this offer, you'll be removed from the social housing waitlist. This rule applies to all applicants on the waitlist and only applies to units that you have chosen on your building selection list. So you have to choose well, because you only get one shot. Um, and the transfer between buildings is unlikely unless you are moving for urgent medical status. Uh, again, if you've moved into a building that is a three-story walk-up, um, you uh, no longer have adequate use of your legs uh, due to arthritis or due to an, a spinal injury or anything like that, um, then you you know, that would be a circumstance under which you apply for a move um, due to urgent medical status. Otherwise, you will move within the building or under the same property management. So if you are in London Housing and London Housing has a couple of buildings, you may move between them. If your landlord, whoever they are, has a couple of buildings, potentially you can move between them. Otherwise, you are moving within the same building, which may not be to your preference. Um, the wait time is long. You may change your housing application if your circumstances change. And this is the, um, the link for uh, housing updates. Um, the housing wait times are very long. Um, upwards of 10 years in some circumstances, uh, not ideal, but due to this, there are things in place um, to maintain your um, your status on the housing list uh, that you will have to update your uh, contact info every time you move, every time you change your phone, every time anything happens to your contact, you need to contact housing. You can contact them through the form on this web on this um, on this PowerPoint, or um, you can contact them uh, through their website. You can contact them by calling them, but you have to contact them because you will have 48 hours uh, to respond to um, an offer of housing. And if you do not respond after 48 hours, there's a little bit of leeway if you call um, somebody like me and you explain your circumstances, but anything more than 72 hours, and I'm nearly certain that you would not get housing. 
um, they go through the housing list very quickly um, because of the fact that there is no housing and because you know the people are waiting so urgent there's such a long list um, so this is up to you you will have to do this and if for any reason you cannot do this if you um, if there are any barriers for you then you should speak to a friend a family member um, an advocate um, somebody who is working alongside you that is able to commit to um, keeping your contact information up to date someone who's close to you and knows when your housing and contact information has changed uh, if you apply for a one bedroom and let's say you have a kid or you have two kids or you uh, you know you need a caregiver or you have significant uh, medical issues and you need another room for your um, for any of these these me the medical equipment um, then you can change your um, housing application in that way you can update the number of bedrooms that you need if you have kids that move out you can again update the number of bedrooms you need you can go from a two bedroom or one bedroom they will not allow you to be overhoused. so if you receive an application um, uh, or you receive a um, an offer for a two bedroom and your status uh, has changed and you now need a one bedroom then you will not be given that two bedroom um, and you will potentially be put down at the bottom of the list again so if you are at a chance of being overhoused um, then you um, then you would it would be wise to always update your information um, and other things to remember so because you only have one offer and you are you know, going to have to either take it or be taken off the housing list, you're going to want to choose well. You can change your building. Again, if your circumstances change, if you have children, your children go to a certain school, you wanna be close to them. You want to be close to school, or you're working, you want to be close to your work, any of these things, anything like that, then you will want to change your application. But as you're making these choices, or as you're making your initial choice, um, something to think about is uh, building selection. Consider what is right for you, your family, and your obligations. Um, if you drive, I would drive out, um, but whatever your mode of transportation is, bus, taxi, bicycle, whatever it is, go to your desired location. Take um, a trip out there and see how long does it take you to get there. Um, is it close to a grocery store? Is it close to work, children's schools, daycares, medical appointments, anything like that? Anything that you have to do, is it close to you? Um, and does it make sense for you? So if you're riding out there or you're biking, busing out there, if you can't get to your medical appointments from where you are, is it going to be someplace that you will desire to be? If you're out there looking at out there, wherever that is, whatever apartment building you decide that you would like to live in or townhouse, co-op, anything, whatever you decide to live, um, you will have to decide where you want to live and what is available in your area. You know, sort of make that decision first. Where do you decide to live in the city? Where is some place that, you know, your friends live or your family lives or some place where you think is a good spot to live that would also be to take into consideration um, while you're out visiting these locations um, if there are people outside you know whatever walking in and out having a cigarette whatever whatever they're doing if they're outside there's then maybe you can ask them um, about the building are there any issues um, you know do they like to live in the apartments any, anything you know laundry facilities anything that you have questions about things that you would consider important to you. I'm sure people would be happy to answer these questions and it might give you um, some insight into uh, how the building works and whether or not you really wanna have it down as your, 
as the place you are going to have to choose. If they, if, if housing calls you and they say, you have one choice, this is it. We have a one bedroom there and it's available. And it would be great for you to feel confident in accepting that housing, you know? Um, so, uh, and also, so there's, there's a star here that says, depending on your situation, ask an advocate about housing access or the housing access center about the Canada Ontario housing benefit or um, possible diversion programs. So the Canada housing benefit uh, only sort of comes up in April. It's not available to individuals. It's only available through agencies. You would has, have to ask the housing access center how you could access that, this. This is funding for individuals who are on the housing list, but do not live in rent geared to income housing currently. This is a supportive um, amount of money that would allow your circumstances to be reduced down to the um, 30% of your income, which is um, what rent geared to income is. It's 30% of your income. So if you make $1,000 a month, then your rent is $300. This amount disappears very quickly. People use it. It is highly sought after. But if you are able to work with an agency who has access to this, um, Roth Home has diversion programs. They or potentially can access it. Um, uh, there are uh, other places, mission services potentially can access it. Um, Lennon Cares can potentially access it. Um, you can call the Housing Access Center. It, the, all of the funds have been allocated this year, but next April, um, there will be more funds and this will continue until 2029. So um, you are also welcome to contact me and ask me because I can keep up to date on where these funds are and how you may access them. And I, you cannot access them through me. I do not have these funds, but I can help you um, find the programs that can, um, can uh, support you with these funds potentially. Um, diversion programs, Roth Home has a diversion program. Um, there are other places in the city that have diversion programs. If you are staying with Inova, if you are staying at Roth Home, if you're staying in a shelter system, there are programs that potentially can keep you, generally people with children. Um, if you are experiencing homelessness or are going to experience homelessness, there are programs that can have you housed. Um, these are individual programs and these are individual circumstances. You would have to speak with um, the Housing Access Centre, the Homeless Prevention Team at the City of London, or you can call me and I can help facilitate these, um, uh, these connections to these programs. Um, there are housing, there's specific housing for Indigenous populations. Um, uh, at Losa, uh, um, has um, some accommodations. Um, they can give you some information about that. Um, their phone number is here. And there's also a um, uh, Four Feathers Housing Cooperative um, in uh, partnership with uh, the Ontario Aboriginal Housing Services. Um, the Four Feathers Housing Cooperative uh, operates a number of affordable housing projects in the city of London for low and modest income families um, uh, for individuals of um, Indigenous ancestry. Um, you can contact them at the number on the screen and they can help you um, access some housing. So co-op housing. Co-op housing is different than rent geared to income housing. Um, uh, a housing cooperative is a type of not-for-profit housing, um, which is owned by people who live there. If you live in co-op housing, uh, you're an owner, not a tenant. Um, they have some great advantages. There's a, a deep community um, feeling in them. They are usually well taken care of. Um, uh, you will have obligations as a co-op member, um, which will all be presented to you as you apply to a co-op. We have included, um, if you uh, 
uh, have come to the webinar, then you will get a, uh, a package through email. If you do not, if you're not at the webinar, then you can access that on our website, um, in which it has uh, like a, a co-op package, which explains everything in detail about about cooperatives and how they work, um, where they are in London, uh, how you access them, number of bedrooms, uh, costs for each of them. Um, there are many uh, well-priced co-op um, housing alternatives. Um, they also have a wait list because everywhere has a wait list, but their wait list is um, shorter and uh, their, um, the amount that they charge is, is um, not as much as you were living in RGI housing because RGI housing is, I mean, comparatively lower than any, anything else you could apply for, but um, it is reasonable, meaning that if you are on Ontario Works, you could afford a one bedroom. Um, it would be stretching it, but it's not, it, it's, it's about, it's about 570 for a one bedroom. Um, some places are a little bit higher, uh, about uh, 900 for a three bedroom, um, a little bit more, but 900 to 1000 for a three bedroom. Um, and these are, these are prices that are more reasonable and may be uh, the wait list may be within a time limit that would serve you um, depending on your housing situation. Um, they're also generally nice. They're nice uh, places for families, nice for individuals. They are well taken care of by co-op members. Um, there's a community spirit. Um, and so if you are community minded and you feel as though this would be an option for you, something that where you would have to participate, um, then it can be a really great option for individuals, especially people with families. Um, that's another thing. If you are applying for London housing, take a look um, when you go to apply. If you have kids, go look. Make sure that the place where you're going to live feels comfortable, like a comfortable place for your children. Um, that would just be a tip. Just, just something to think about if you're going to go, and 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 you have you have children, uh, or are planning to have children and to live in uh, 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 subsidized housing. Um, I would look at the uh, playground facilities, um, just to just to make sure that this is a you know a place where you feel comfortable, um, because you do you deserve to feel comfortable in the place where you are living. Um, uh, so co-op housing is made up of both, both market rent and subsidized units. Um, though co-ops are generally cheaper than market rent, um, which we've just talked about, you can apply for subsidized units through London Housing. So on your list, when you apply for whatever you apply for, family building, adult building, seniors building, you will see that on your list, there are certain spots where it says, uh, you know, whatever, toll puddle, co-op, um, something like that. So that those are the RGI units that are in London Housing. Um, these are available uh, through your application. Um, so there is a chance that you could, you know, an option is potentially that you could apply for co-op housing at market rent and um, move into co-op housing at some point when it becomes available to you, but also consecutively apply for RGI housing. So if you apply for RGI housing, then when an RGI unit comes up, then you are already living in the neighborhood that you desire and you will then pay the rent that is more in line with your um, economic circumstances. You know, so it's a, it's a potentially, um, you know, good way of, getting into a housing situation that is uh, more affordable and feels good and consistent and can be long-term for you. Um, so we have some more upcoming workshops. Uh, if you have any questions, oh, there are the workshops. If you have any questions about um, 
this uh, uh, webinar today. Um, it, my contact info will be next and you'll see it. Um, and uh, we have um, a bunch coming up. We have Wills and Power of Attorney, which is on April 1st. Um, this is a great one. Um, it's going to be very informative and it will tell you about all things to do with wills and uh, POAs, which are um, incredibly important um, for you, for your loved ones. Uh, it will make your life so much easier if you have a will and a power of attorney, especially if you're uh, the people that you care for have a will and power of attorney. Um, how to access financial resources and what you're eligible for. Um, this is another webinar that will be hosted by me, Leah, um, and it will be uh, how to navigate uh, OW, ODSP, discretionary benefits and other supports and resources. There are um, quite a few out there and there are some things that you are probably eligible for that you don't know about. Um, and there are some things that you'll be eligible for that you may know about, but I can help you to access them potentially, or just give you some more information. So if you're interested in something like that, if you have any questions about discretionary benefits, um, beds, cribs, uh, medical devices, anything like that, what you're eligible for when you're moving, um, we'll also go over some housing stability bank options, some things that they can do to help you with, um, if you have uh, rent back pay, that you owe, um, if you have uh, a big hydro bill that you need to pay, um, any, any utility bills that you need to pay. Um, this is a good workshop to go to if you have any questions about um, uh, like um, needing last month's rent or um, potentially being evicted from some place because you have not paid rent or you have rent owing or um, you're worried about your hydro being cut off because that's something that's going to happen soon with um, May in May hydro is able to cut people off. Um, there's now no more restrictions based on COVID. Um, so if you have any of those issues, um, contact me before this workshop um, because I can help direct you to the right places. Also contact Housing Stability Bank. They have lots of, lots of grants um, lots of uh, low rate loans that can be paid back. Um, they have lots of funding and they would really like to help provide you with that funding um, so that you can stay in the house that you're at right now and you can keep your hydro on. Um, and uh, just, you know, as, as everybody should. Um, also, uh, um, ask about um, the, um, Ontario Energy Support Program, which is also a great benefit. Um, oh, and there's SEEP too, which also you should call in Hydro about. That is a program that was put in place during COVID and there were some uh, big restrictions for individuals who are looking for support. Um, some of those restrictions have been eased and if you were not eligible for the um, uh, COVID emergency uh, uh, relief program through um, Lennon Hydro, you may be eligible for it now. This is also something to look into. Um, uh, this is not about housing, but it is about housing because it will help you maintain your housing. Um, and uh, um, I'd like you, to, if you need any help with this, please contact me before the workshop on April 22nd and I will be ha happy to help you um, with those very specific programs. Uh, housing Stability Bank programs. So uh, just for girls, um, that's Wednesday, March 31st at 5 p.m. Wednesday, April 28th at 5 p.m. Uh, this is uh, for youth who identify as female um, between the ages of 14 and 18. Um, they share uh, crafts and learn about mentorship, art, food, so many interesting things hosted by the most amazing people, such wonderful mentors for individuals um, between the ages of 14 and 18. Um, uh, and this is, this is great. There's a jot form here. The jot form is a form that you will fill out on our website and it will come directly to our email and we will be able to uh, respond to you. 
um, the Registered Disability Savings Account Workshop. This is by Jesse Malik. He's amazing and he does great work. And um, if you have a disability, a long-term disability, if you uh, uh, have a disability that will prevent you from um, uh, taking care of yourself later on in life, um, if you have a child with a disability who uh, fits the criteria, then an RDSP can um, be a really vital uh, savings program to, um, to support you um, financially. Um, this uh, sort of goes hand in hand with the disability tax credit, something that Jesse Malik will also talk about and something that I can help you with. Um, so you can come to this workshop and I can uh, facilitate any um, questions about the uh, disability um, tax um, uh, application. Um, and then this last one, which is May 27th, uh, which is how to access low cost internet services. Um, I am also hosting this workshop and I can tell you about how to access low cost internet services. Um, there are many out there um, right now and we can go through the process of signing up for those workshops or that internet, um, that program. So the job form is there and if you fill that out and send it over, then you will be able to um, connect uh, with us on our webinar on uh, May 27th. You can also, um, I'm recording this, and so this will also be uh, on, our, uh, on our website for you to access at any time. If you have any questions, if you wanna go over something I said, um, then you can rewatch this. And then if you still have questions, you can contact me. And this is our contact information. Um, you can email us at life at exactly.com. It is easier for us if you go through the job forms because they're specific to what you're looking at. Um, if you have overall questions, you can uh, just send us an email. You can call us, um, uh, which is not necessarily the best right now because of COVID, but we will get back to you. Uh, email is best, um, but whatever is available to you is the way that you will contact us and the way that we will respond to you. Um, we will come to you how you need us to. Uh, and then at the bottom, it, uh, gives you a link to um, the community advocate page on our website and through there you can send me um, an email through the job form. Contact me and I will get back to you. I will email you back or I'll call you back or however you need me to get back to you. I will do that and um, uh, I'm available and on the website it'll also list some of the things that I do as an advocate. Um, I can be helpful uh, with uh, all kinds of things. And I would love to hear from you. So thanks so much. I hope this was helpful. I hope this gives you some insight into applying for London Housing. And if you require help with any of these forms, contact me. Um, I'm going to contact at Lifespin and I would be happy to help you. Okay. Have a great day. Thanks so much. <laughs>